Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Formations Imperial Nobility. So we're looking at all the teams available in Blood Bowl, whether it's the rulebook, the Teams of Legend PDF or the expanded NAF teams. And we're looking at basically how to set up your team. Whether you're kicking or receiving, there are some good things to know if you're going to be putting them on the board. Now this will work for you if you are setting up and will also work if you're playing against the team. So if you're planning on playing Nobility or playing against Nobility, you'll kind of hopefully learn a couple of things from watching this video so uh, you may have already seen the offense and defensive setup videos a lot of those work for most teams what we can do now is delve into the team look at some of the specific positionals that they got and the advantages and how you can kind of tweak things up for a bigger advantage so let's have a look at imperial nobility So first up is a formation that I have used dozens of times now. So I've played an absolute ton of games with Nobility in the last month or two, really just trying to explain what works well on them in the future and actually how good the players are. I learned a couple of things along the way. So the open anchor defense is probably my go-to setup when I don't have the Ogre. Now we will have a look at some formations where if you do have the Ogre as well, this will work against the majority of teams. So there's kind of two elements to this team. You've got the linemen on the front there. Now linemen are very, very vulnerable. And one of the lessons I've learned from mobility is you do need to have a spare one or two because they're going to die. But you put them there and that's their job they are there to die but they have fend now them having fend means that they are going to basically hold that line now it may cost them their lives but that line is going to be held which means you only need to worry about a blitz from the side against one of your positionals now on this team you will have a ton of positionals so i've maxed them out here but realistically you may only have two bodyguards and two blitzers and maybe one or two throwers this guy can be a lineman if you're not too worried about being punched in the face here this guy can be a lineman as well so you're expecting a blitz now there's two elements here the guards the bodyguards sorry b is for blitzer g is for guard t is for thrower so the guards may have guard by this point that's all well and good you would think maybe I can put them a different way around. Now you can do that and maybe put the guard here to get that extra support. But what's likely to happen is a guy here and the blitz here. Two dice. Why are you taking it in the face with the guard? Because they've got wrestle and stand firm. So even if they blitz the corner of your anchor, the likelihood is that that guy is going to remain there regardless of whether he's down or not. So that means they have to actually take this guy out completely and drop him down to be able to access your throwers. And they're not going to want to jump into the middle of this cage, which is really beneficial. So the advantages of the bodyguard is that they are going to stand firm and likely, if they survive, that you end up wrestling the players down so frequently now you can have a black orc blitz your bodyguard and it really gives you an opportunity you get to choose then if they roll both down you get to choose whether or not to just take it and risk the breakage and end their turn or actually just take it to the ground and wrestle them down and stop their movement as well because this is going to be the blitz action so if that works out, what you're going to find is that this blitzer is probably going to be either unattached or in a position next to a player. And then you're going to have a free counter block using actual block, which will then free up your players. So the line's going to get wiped. It's going to get pushed back to here. Your opponent's not going to follow up. They are probably going to tag, tag, give some free blocks here, which are going to be two dice because these guys are eventually going to have guard. And you've got that cheeky block there. And then you've got these two guys. Now against a faster team, I'd probably swap them around and have the blitzers in the backfield. No one's going to tag them. And with their seven squares of movement, they get a real good um, break there. But I do like the guard, uh, the bodyguards as your kind of safeties here. So you can even flex them down a little bit. Wrestle. Anyone who breaks through, you are going to want to take to the ground. It's likely to be a desperate attack with the ball carrier. Blitzing with Wrestle gives you a massive advantage. Now, if you want to hurt someone, the Blitzers with their block are going to do exactly what you want. But if you want to take somebody out because they've got the ball or you want to take the side of a cage down, having Wrestle is so, so effective. So those bodyguards are awesome. Take a punch. You've got Wrestle. The likelihood is that they're either going to be okay. They're going to stay in position. If they do get powered down, that's fine. They're not moving. Um, but you may get a cheeky chance to take someone down with them a Wrestle-wise. That's fantastic. So you've got your line, 
you've got your throwers protected, you've got Blitzer and Guard, Blitzer and Bodyguard there just ready to defend your backfield. But what it really does is it should just stall your opponent's team here and allow you all these players to swing round and counter-attack. Now if you've got an Ogre you can change it up ever so slightly. Still put the Guardian, the Guards, the Bodyguards on the edge here. You can drop the Blitzers in or you can leave them uh, in a kind of line formation. It doesn't matter at all. But the great thing you've got here is you've probably replaced a Thrower on defense with your Ogre which means you get to pop the Ogre in the middle of the Anchor and just counter-strike just however you want if you are stronger than the opponent you can put him on the line but he will be completely unsupported but again that's not a bad move if you put the ogre on the line they're going to be able to block him block him they will have to work at getting two dice block on him potentially three or four players to get that advantage it depends on who you're playing uh, i like having the ogre in reserve you've got a great a great batch of players here that are suitable for counter blitzing but having that ogre available to just move around and chuck some strength where you want him and you want him to stick works really well and if that just is on the line that's fine now a slightly different version of the anchor here is the flat anchor now i ended up using this quite a lot of times and it is imperfect it's a really strange one if you are playing against a kind of mid-range team this has worked out brilliantly so you do three five three so you've still got the three guys on the line but what you've got then is you've got double guard on the side and blitzers in reserve those blitzers are not going to get tagged so this is really effective against kind of like a fast team that is likely to avoid this bit and be unable and unwilling to kind of enter into this cage you may get a side blitz um, but at that point then you will have a very good counter attack here and a sort of team of players that will be flexible to move now this is one of the ones i've got a play example for so we'll just swap over to the other screen so this is from my game against ben ben was running a wear team which is kind of like a cross between wood elves and necromantic i guess you've got a couple of big guys there you've got the werewolves and you've got movement seven edge four pieces so I was playing against the, the Lycans, uh, his team. Uh, I lost a thrower, so I was replacing that thrower there with a lineman there. Let's change the color up, see if we can't get a little bit brighter. There we go. So it would be thrower, thrower, uh, blitzer, blitzer, and then four bodyguards there with three guys on the line to just get punched. So I kicked to Ben, ended up scattering up here next door to one of his werecats, and then he destroyed the line as you can see but all right these guys are armor eight plus that's not brilliant and he did have a couple of mighty blow pieces so actually got away with it with a uh, prone prone and stunned there and fend meant that nobody was following up at all which is okay now these guys had grab so it was kind of moving around it was kind of like playing against uh, black orcs at that point but you can see that ben has just opened up and gone for a side cage immediately now this team here you got movement eight movement seven movement seven so one two three four five six seven eight nine not quite enough for that guy to score but definitely enough for the werewolf to score now this secondary here completely unattacked now if ben had tagged one of these players it probably wouldn't have made much difference it would have just given me a good free block if we move forward to the end of my next turn you can see this whole line can just go up here and mob this team click there you go and you can see that actually it went brilliantly in my favor every one of these players is now engaged in this field here so one two three four five six seven eight of my players are just in amongst that side cage wrecked to the side cage these guys have all got stand firm as well this one's got fend this one's got block and i think he's got block as well and that guy had stand firm it was a bit of a lucky bounce kind of situation but basically you can see that from this point here where everyone's in the backfield to this point here where my backfield is completely empty but then so is the hands of his ball carrier these guys have just been able to bring basically eight of my players against one two three four of his and that's how you win at defense these linemen are just holding up three of their players that's fine three for three where he's had to move and go for a risky side cage to kind of motor on it just allowed my defense to go and that's why the anchor defense is so effective you have a ton of movement and you can just apply it more of your players to less of theirs and you're going to win that fight as the nobility team is such a defensive team that can score very quickly uh, but it is quite a heavy defensive team you've got two more two more quick setups i'll go for you you can deploy column very effectively with this team because this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy all have stand firm so if someone wants to come through your team they are going to have to they can't they can't 
they can't, they can't. They're going to have to knock him out, knock him out, kill him, and then run down the middle. And you know what happens then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, basically these guys have got everything covered. And you are going to be able to bring one blitzer down, two blitzer down, and go for a punch. And if they don't tag all of your guards as well... It's going to be a two dice wrestle blitz for defense. So you are going to have four players there that can swing through. And let's be realistic. If your opponent is breaking through in one turn, they are not going to have a lot of movement to go much past the sweet spot, if at all, because you've got these areas here so well defended. And if you have an ogre, chucking him on the line there actually just benefits you massively. doesn't matter. You can change this guy to a lineman instead of a thrower. Having that ogre on the line is just going to defend this piece even more. They're going to have to knock him out, knock him out, bring a fourth player in to try and push the ogre aside. And at that point, they're going to have a running lane here. That is fine, because he's going to tag him, and he's going to blitz him, and then these guys are going to absolutely tie up that breakthrough. The only vulnerability here is if the opponent is willing to stall, but actually, if they disengage from your front line, which they potentially will do because you've got Fend, that is okay. These guys get knocked down, your opponent isn't following up, one goes there, one goes there, and then you have got a fantastic column defense that they simply can't get through. This will cost them four turns at least. So if you are in a game where you do not care what happens to your players, you do not care what happens, you just cannot afford to let them score, go for the column defense here with this team. Four stand firm at the front, two blitzers at the back can just tackle anything and yeah this is going to fold but when it does you should be able to rally into this center point here it's really solid and you can run a very similar offense when it comes to agility if you're unlikely to face a team that's able to get two die blocks on you very well guard on the side guard on the side having stand firm those bodyguards aren't going anywhere if they want to attack your blitzer they're going to have to do it with a lot of work and these guys generally speaking do level up to get guard very quickly i found that to be incredibly effective it feels counterintuitive because they've got wrestle but wrestle just protects them from dying quite a lot of the time um, and uh, having that stand firm keeps them in the fight so yes it's going to cost your opponent to block you and then you can wrestle them down having block is better and i've gone guard then block with a couple of, and it's been really effective um, but just having that guy getting ready to stand up have guard it's it's an offensive guard more than a defensive guard but stand firm means that guy isn't going anywhere if they come down here they're going to have to go for this blitzer and you are going to have to chuck a support in here and blitz here and if one of these guys has got guard that's going to be a bad block the best thing for them to do is to take out this guard uh, the bodyguard there and then they get a side running lane but then you've got blitzer thrower bodyguard for the two die wrestle blitz and if they want to come down the middle they've just got an absolute ton of players that they're going to have to try and tag and it is not going to work for them trust me i love playing defense with the nobility team but the offense does not lack you look at this team and you're like fine it's a kind of mid-ranged offense okay it's going to be a three four turn scoring team that's fine they don't necessarily have the legs to grind it out for six turns these guys score in two turns without any difficulty at all. So the 5-4-2 offense is a great way to play against a team that is just kind of a standard team. There is basically nothing I wouldn't use this lineup for. Um, Ogre here, if uh, you've got one, would be brilliant. But if not, that's okay. If your, opponent, if your opponent deploys heavy on the line with five or six players, you can just stagger this to make some profitable blocks and leave your lineman on the line. So you can essentially, if they deploy five guys, you can deploy five guys, get a couple of good two die blocks, and then leave three of your Fen linemen tagging their remaining five players. That's going to give you a numbers advantage and free up your kind of second batch here. Now, these two throwers in the backfield are going to be just fine. They've got a ton of range. Um, you're not looking to grab the ball and escalate it and move up in the first turn. You can do that. You can do that just fine. And we'll have a look at an offense that's built just for that and a play example for you. Um, but if you look at this setup here, three versus five. If we've got a cheeky bit of guard here, that makes it even bit even better. But hey let's pretend it's not that's okay he can still go for a two die block there he's supporting your guard is okay this guy can then go for a two die block if he wants it because he's got some support or you just block straight up there's a ton here of you can just do great stuff try and attack with the lineman they've got edge four plus which makes them uh, less useful for dodging away and they've got no combat skills but two dice is better than one dice with a combat skill 
and you know you're not going to have a ton of rerolls sure you can open up with the guards if you need to use that wrestle okay so if you're going to make a one die block then one die block with wrestle is better um, but otherwise you can try and use these linemen to block away and it's just going to free up your more expensive positionals they're there to support and when they get guard they become really good at just activating those linemen so you should be able to win that front line if uh, they've deployed so heavily you don't want to engage then drop the guards back okay that's fine sell that front line that's okay and what you've got here is two very mobile throwers and then you can bring people down to support in any way you want what i'd like to see is the ball landing somewhere where a thrower can tag it so the thrower marks it bring these guys down to screen this one's going to be the one to pick up you clear out the line you take a profitable blitz here and just kind of create a semi beachhead but try not to engage collect the ball and then the next turn is going to force your opponent to react and then you can break out and score so this team is very much mid-range okay it's not stronger than a lot of teams and it's not faster than a lot of teams it just plays that control game really interesting team I, i've actually really really love playing it so the heavy flank offense will work for this team beautifully if you need to score in two or three turns it is going to be harder for you to achieve. It's not automatic like it is with Skaven or some of the Elf teams. But normally it's going to put you in a position to take a one or two die blitz for the touchdown with a blitzer. Okay, now these blitzers are fantastic and they will get dodged really quickly. And then they become really, really effective. Lack of strength access is not a bad thing. Eventually getting break tackle is going to be even better better but honestly dodge on these guys guard on these guys and you are you really start cooking as a team so heavy flank here is a very similar setup to most other teams what you try and do is tag their line with your linemen put supporting positionals in place there your fastest positionals in the wide zone ready to go and some supporting players there so we've got thrower here throw in the back Basically, he can grab the ball, bring it up here, give it to this guy. He can come up here, give it to this guy. You've got a, another positional there to play safety. Now, I like using a third, uh, sorry, your third or fourth bodyguard over here. It just controls a zone. It's got stand firm. So your opponent's going to have to run around. They're not going to be able to punch through it. And if they go on a jolly little blitz, there's also a chance you're going to be able to wrestle them down, which is really going to upset them. So having that guy there to protect, that's brilliant. Setting up this lineman a little bit wider means that actually all these tackle zones are protected in fact it's better than that isn't it it's all these tackle zones are protected so if they get a blitz they've got to have to go the long way around to get anything inside here now if it's a great kick and it goes here and they've got blitz you're stuffed but hey the heavy flank is there for you to it's turn five no it's turn six turn seven we need to score now or we've got an opportunity to score now and i'll show you how it plays out in the middle so your most effective things are having ball collectors in the backfield having a strong enough line and a subset of team here so as you can see we've got six of our 11 players that are ready to go create a beachhead and then build yourself a launch pad now a launch pad is when you've got a player secured within scoring range of the next turn so this guy protects wide just in case he protects there just in case what we'll see here is he'll be able to block him away follow up and then you've got him there tagging these players. That's two linemen on them. They're going to be able to break out of that, but it's going to cost them activations, and that's what you want. Plus, they've got Fend, which is really annoying. And then you've got Guard Free, Guard Free, Blitzer, Blitzer, Guard as well. And those guards, having Stand Firm, makes them an excellent screening force. Really good. Stand Firm is going to ruin your opponent's day, so you are going to be very, very solid. I've actually got an example of this. So what we have here is basically the formation we've just looked at. Now this is me playing against uh, Dwarf Lord James's Black Orc team on Fumble. Um, so you can see he's gone three on the line and actually gone five wide there, which has made it a little bit different. But the same contingent parts are there. So we've got the two in the backfield to collect the ball. We've got one guy wide up here to protect that zone. We've got one disengaged lineman here wide to tag these players. And then we've gone heavy on the line there with the core of uh, linemen, guards, blitzers and two players in reserve so again it's exactly the same plan which is collect the ball push away the line move up protect and then either receive the ball quickly and score or just break through and go straight for the touchdown let's fast forward it a turn and you can see there so didn't go for handoff to um straight away so moved up the ball carrier here but you can see we managed to just neck it in there and create a decent side cage. Now, I much prefer to use the bodyguards, but ended up having to use their resource to take on the Black Orcs. But 
fend, fend, uh, cheeky little dodge, uh, sorry, block, cheeky little block there as well. What I did do is counteract the movement of the Blackhawks here by tagging those players. So Blackhawks having only movement four means they're not actually going to be able to attack much at all. So this cage here becomes really, really safe because that guy's not getting at me. The best thing, one, two, three, four, the best thing there is a Blitzer and the Troll at this piece there, and that's going to be a Fend Away or a Cheeky Blitz in from a Goblin. Now we haven't even handed the ball off here, so I've got two blocking catchers which makes it a really profitable way. Now, James brings his force down there, creates a screen in the way, uh, does knock a couple of guys down, but as you can see, all we have to do here is take a, uh, probably give the ball to this guy here, and then up, blitz out, two dice, straight in. I think that's what happens. Yeah, there we go. That's all we had to do there, is get the ball, hand off to this guy, and then a block through. And if you're in a position where you're not playing against strength two teams, it's going to be fine because actually you should be able to maneuver additional support to either get two die block or just take one dice with a blocking blitzer if you are going for the score. Now I've got to reiterate this. The heavy flank offense is only there for you to, if you need to score in two to three turns, you can do it. And I've been doing it time and time again with the nobility team, but that's because I play every team kind of like Skaven. So that wraps up our formations video for Imperial Nobility. I know it's a bit longer than normal, but I've had a ton of games with this team recently, and it is kind of a brand new team. So I figured that the more I could share, the better it will be. Now for countering these guys, all you have to do is tag them. They don't have a ton of combat power. They don't have a ton of blo uh, dodge. As they develop, they get better. The blitzers become blodgers, and the uh, bodyguards get guard, and they become really effective. So early on though all you really have to do is tag them and really just force them around they don't have a lot of strength so black orc versus nobility look for your black orcs to go one to one with almost every player on this team follow up when you can murder and kill if you can get a cheeky foul in one of their positionals even better anyway guys we're gonna wrap up this video please let me know if there's anything else you want to know about imperial nobility and we'll be back again soon with more blood bowl content happy blocking Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.